What's up developers, it's Dario here and welcome back to a new video where we're going to cover a couple useful methods for modifying collections in Laravel. The first method that I want to cover is the push method, which is a built-in function in Laravel's collections class. The push method simply allows you to add one or more elements to the end of a collection. And this is useful when you want to append new data to an existing collection without overriding the original data. The power of the push method lies in its flexibility. The power of the push method lies in its flexibility because it can accept any type of data, including integers, strings, objects, and even other collections. It's also pretty cool that you don't need to define the push method multiple times in case you want to add or append multiple elements, since it accepts multiple optional arguments, allowing you to append multiple elements to the collection in one go. Now let's say that we want to add two new elements to our current collection a string of Laravel, and a new collection containing the integer values of 1, 2, and 3. We can achieve this by using our collection and chaining the push method to it. Then we can basically pass in two arguments, where the first one is a string of Laravel, while the second one is an array of value 1, 2, and 3. Once we perform our request, you will see that the push method has appended the elements that we have added to the collection variable. Now next to the push method, Laravel offers the put method, which is also a powerful way to modify collections. The put method allows you to set a value on a collection by a given key. And this is useful when you want to update an existing value or append a new key value pair to the collection. One of the main benefits of the put method is that it automatically handles creating a new key value pair or updating an existing one. This means that you don't have to worry about checking if the key exists or manually updating the value. Now let's use our collection variable again and let's chain the put method to it. Right now we need to define two arguments, a key and a value. So let's say that the key is name and the value is John Doe. Once we perform our request, you will see that the put method added a new key value pair to our collection right at the bottom where the key is equal to name and the value is equal to John Doe. If the key name already exists, the put method would update the value. So let's say that on the line below, we're gonna use our collection again and chain the put method to it. The key will be name again, and the value will be John. Once we perform our request, you can see that it has not inserted a new element, but it has updated an element based on the key. Another benefit of the put method is that it's chainable. This means that you can add multiple key value pairs to a collection in one line of code. So right after the first put method, let's chain another put method, or we're gonna say that the age is equal to 33. Once we perform our request, you'll see that it has appended a key value pair of age and a value of 33. Now let's talk about a real life scenario where you might use the put method. Let's say that you have a collection of user data and you want to update a specific user information. You could use the put method to update their name, age, or location without having to manually search for data in the collection. Now I do have to mention that there might be a potential disadvantage of the put method. Or well, I have to mention it so you are aware of it. We have pretty much seen it, but the issue is that it can override existing data if you use the same key multiple times. So be careful when using this method to avoid accidental overriding important data. Now next to the put method, a Laravel also offers the give me a moment forget method, which allows you to remove an item from a collection. So let's say that we want to remove the value of developer right here. So what we could do is basically using our collection variable again and chaining the forget method to it. Now quick note, the forget method can only remove an item from a collection by its key. So let's say that we want to delete key number five. Once we perform our request, you will see that the forget method has removed the element at index 5. One of the main benefits of the forget method is the same as the put method because it allows you to use multiple forget methods. This means that you can remove multiple items from a collection in one line of code. So let's say that we want to forget number 1 and let's add number 0 as well. Once we perform our request, you'll see that we have deleted the first two values. The next method that I want to cover is the pop method. And the pop method is a powerful way to remove the last element from a collection. Now let me repeat myself, the last element. So let's use our collection variable again, and let's chain the pop method to it. 
unlike other methods, the pop method does not accept any argument, because it simply removes the last element from an array. Now once we perform our request, you will see that it has outputted the last value. But if we then go on the line below and output our collection again, you will see that the key value pair of h and 33 has been removed. Now one of the main benefits is pretty much what we have already seen. If we get rid of our collection variable and set our pop method equal to a variable, so let's say removed, perform our request, you'll see that it has basically stored the removed element in a variable which we can then use later on. So Laravel gives you the chance to pretty much recover if you have made a mistake. Now one potential disadvantage of the pop method is that it can only remove the last element from a collection. This means that you can't use it to remove elements in the middle of the collection. The final method that I want to cover is the shift method. And the shift method removes the first element from a collection and returns its value. And this is useful when you want to remove an element from a collection without having to manually search for it. So let's use our variable collection again, where we can chain the shift method to it. Now it simply removes the first value, so we don't need to add an argument right here. And once we perform our request, you can see that the shift method has removed the first element from the collection where the value apparently was an integer of three. Now, just like the pop method, you could set it equal to a variable, let's say removed, which we can then use later on. Now, quick summary, we covered the push, put, forget, pop, and shift methods. The push method allows you to append new data to an existing collection without overriding the original data. The put method sets a value on a collection by a given key and can update an existing value or append a new key value pair to it. The forget method removes an item from a collection by its key and pop and shift remove the last and first elements from a collection. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.